Please press best book. And that can already be a death sentence. The most painful five star read of my life. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. <laughs> I'm sweaty, so I surprised you. <laughs> you did? You were so shocked. I knew you were here today. You did? Uh huh. How'd you, How'd you know? Because um, stars said Tuesday, and you didn't come Tuesday, so that meant today. <laughs> well, who is you doing so <laughs> Wait, we gotta do it again. <laughs> what did you do to your hair? It's fashion. Okay. <laughs> So. I heard you had a fade, so I don't want to hear it, Grandma. I, I need it. I had a fade. I just don't have money. We're going right to the barber together. Uh, Come on. <laughs> you, you'd like my barber because you're age. Maybe I should have waited then. Yeah. Yeah, I told everybody, um, yeah, it's like Kingwood. It's a bougie area. She said. It's another bougie. It's a bougie area. I'm so excited for food. Happy Blackathon. What is up, y'all? It is Blackathon 2024. It is finally here. The moment that we've all been waiting for. I wait for Blackathon all year long. And this one was no exception. In some ways, I am even more stoked about this Blackathon than I have been for Blackathons in the past, mainly because this year it's just really set in that I have been running this read a thon for five years. Every single year, rain or shine, no matter what happens, and I'm just so incredibly proud of it. We're currently running on day five of Blackathon. I had a family emergency and had to fly out at the end of January to Houston. Had a wonderful time spending time with my brothers and my auntie, and it was really, really beautiful. And anybody who wants more details on what is going on, that is up on the Patreon. Jesse has catching up to do because I am five days behind Blackathon and this is my challenge. I am challenging myself to read 28 books in 28 days for February. This is something that I've always wanted to do ever since I started Blackathon, and this is going to be the year. The closest I've ever gotten was 22 books, and I am ready. But I'm about to film a couple videos right now, so I'm going to hop and do that, and I'll come back and let y'all know what I am planning to make my first read of Blackathon. What's up, cuties? Operation Film Black Authors, I'm giving a second chance to. Was a success, that was fun, and I have to put my Amazon packages away. I have to unpack my suitcase, but it has just been go, go, go. I landed at midnight last night and I just kind of relaxed, watched <laughs> cartoons until 3.30 and ate snacks. Woke up at 11, took a dog on the walk, got ready, filmed, and now we're here. And I just, I haven't had any enjoy the house time. So what I'm going to do is get some reading done, put those away, and just vibe. These are books that have been on my shelves for a while now. I need to get to Ikenga by Dr. Nerio Gorfor and The Kind of Sly by Nancy Johnson. This is supposed to be a contemporary mystery and this of course is a magical middle grade. So I am going to be starting with both of these books. This one is set in 2008 during the financial crisis and the rise of Barack Obama and we are following Ruth Tuttle who's an Ivy League educated black engineer eager to start a family but Ruth isn't certain. She was never gotten over the baby that she gave birth to and was forced to give up. So they go back to the Indiana factory town of her own youth, which is plagued with unemployment, racism, and despair. And while her family's happy to see her, they remind her of the painful secrets. So a traumatic incident strains the town's already scorching racial ten tensions, and Ruth and Midnight find themselves on a collision course that could upend both of their lives. With Ikenga, when Namdi's father, the police chief of Kaleria, is killed, Namdi vows to avenge his death. Wondering what a 12-year-old boy can do, he dreams of being all-powerful like the superheroes he likes to read about, and he is charged to use those powers for good and has to figure out how to control his powers. <laughs> Excited about both of these. We're going to give these a try. These are not for you. These are not for puppies. We did not get 25 pages into this book without wanting to backhand a man. She and her husband are planning to have a child. She very clearly has reservations about this and doesn't want to, but he's so excited. They're both super, super successful and they feel like this is the next step. They've been married for five years. They have the 401k or whatever. They bought the house, etc. You get the picture. So he finally confronts her. She's very clearly not ready to have kids despite 
the book opening up with a scene of, with her removing her IUD and he is very clearly all excited about this moment. So he says, Every time I mention kids, you act like I just asked you to rob a 7-Eleven. You hardly want to make love anymore. There's nothing complicated about a man and his wife having a family. Is it my wide forehead? You don't want our kids to inherit it? He laughed at his feeble attempt at a joke, but it came out hollow, devoid of any humor. His face tightened like he was in pain and his mouth twisted at the corners. So that was the first red flag. It was like, ooh, it's, we're getting, it's a little bit of fragility there. So without waiting for her to respond, he keeps going and he says a bunch of things, one of which is my parents worked hard to send me to prep schools and overseas immersion trips. Congratulations. When I married you, all I could think about was giving that same amazing life to our children. That's what being a real man is about, leading a family. Is it so wrong for a man to want that? Yikes. All of that is a big, big yikes, right? So she finally says, I love you, dude, I love you. I love you so much, but have you considered that I may be dealing with my own thing, something that has nothing to do with you or your precious manhood. And we were like, yes, exactly, exactly. Put him in his place and let him know like you're being really insensitive. There's such a better way that we can go about having this very sensitive discussion. He responds with, all I know is, great, which means, okay, I shouldn't have to build a case and have to persuade my own wife to have kids with me like we're in a law and order courtroom. He's pacing now, right? Then goes on to say, Penelope and Tess were even talking the other night about having a kid, whether or not they can legally marry. Here we are married and look at us right now. Something's wrong as hell with this picture. Also gross, everything, the more that he talks, the grosser it gets. Disgusting. Now you're gonna say, well, our two lesbian friends wanna have a kid so bad and we can't, so you're ruining you're ruining this for everybody. She said, hey, can you please leave them out of our marriage? He goes, fine, you're right. The first time he's acknowledged that she's correct in any way and says, but why don't you tell me what or who this is about then? I'm trying real hard to understand here. If a man's wife doesn't want his child and can't stand to have him touch her, to have him touch her anymore, it's usually because there's another man. He choked on the words and they came out hard and brittle. And that's when I came to y'all. Now, the sprints, with Gavin, I'm on Gavin's Patreon. These sprints are ending in one second, so I'm gonna vent over there. Look at this cutie. Join Gavin's Patreon. What is up, cuties? We are a couple days in the future, and your boy is on their way to get acupuncture. Okay, the last few days have been wild, but I have continued reading Ikenga in The Kindest Lie. I am off to my acupuncture appointment, so this is going to come with me. After my acupuncture, I have my eyelashes. I don't anticipate that I will be able to do any physical reading during these appointments, but I, I just, I wanna have the book just in case. I did complete A Master of Gin yesterday by P. Jelly Clark. Oh, so good. Set in Cairo, an incredible gender-defiant main character, sapphic relationship, a book that is full of gin and ifrit and mythology and heart and soul. It is so amazing. I loved the steampunk element. I loved everything and I am a sucker for anything featuring gin so that book was phenomenal. Without further delay, let's get running on our errands. I just had a good training session outside in the yard with Akasha. Now she's nomming on, on her, um, bull testicle or whatever. Is that good? Damn, she is, Santa Claus is going to town. I do not envy that bully stick. <laughs> Shattered. <laughs> in our hands. My love life be like, that's how it's going. Why are you breathing like you just got off work? She's panting because she wants the goods. She wants the goods, man. Let's go see what it's in here. Southern Comfort Foods Place in Minneapolis. And I was craving them. Fried green tomatoes, pork sandwich, mac and cheese, and collard greens. Had to get that hot sauce. Hot sauce. Yeah. 
Today, today has been so wonderful and so beautiful. Definitely having an unseasonably warm week in Minneapolis and I am living for it so I decided because it is so warm I was going to run a bunch of errands. I got her food and her treats stocked up. I got groceries, I went to the bank, I got a car wash. I was all over town getting things done and taking names and while doing all of that, got acupuncture as well. I, uh, I finished the audiobook for Pretty and I'm awarding this book five out of five stars. This is one of the most genre expansive and beautifully tender black contemporary novels that we have ever read in our life at so many points in time while listening to the book, I kept asking myself whether or not this was a, a novel told in verse because it was that lyrical and that beautiful. These casual, beautiful, striking lines full of poignancy about everything from romance and the weight of black masculinity, but also the joys of black masculinity about protecting community and protecting family, about learning how to love people in both platonic and um, romantic ways, how to show up for people, commentary about gentrification and what we can do within our own communities to police ourselves and help ourselves thrive. It was phenomenal. It was a really, really good book. I highly recommend it. I went into it expecting a soft, tender YA romance, but this was actually very in line with You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akwek Amezi. That book, while yes, is a romance, it is also very messy. It's very chaotic, and that is what pretty is like. It is a lot of messy queers. Both of those boys are messy. Both of them are going through it, making big mistakes, and both of them have things going on in their lives that aren't each other, which is often my gripe with romances, is that the romance takes over the character work, and also, not the character work, I'm sorry, but takes over everything else that's going on in the protagonist's lives. The romance is at the center. One of the boys is recovering from a shooting and PTSD and being abandoned as a kid and a family friend comes out and says, yo, I like you and interrupts the romance and then they have to figure that out. And it's just all about the messiness of being young and black and queer and also just a body in today's world. It was so freaking amazing. And I love that the romance took that sometimes the action and the thriller aspect of the book was taking center stage and other times it was the romance and sometimes it was both simultaneously and that's what I mean by genre bending and it made these boys and their lives and what they were going through feel all the more real. I just absolutely loved it so it has something in there for thriller mystery fans because there's a really big thriller mystery component definitely content warnings for gun violence. And obviously there's a ton of romance commentary. There's commentary about racism in the school system, specifically the hyper-policing of black kids and trying to keep them in line and sending them to the principal if they don't do exactly what they're supposed to do, keeping their grades down, bullying them until they act out and then getting them kicked out of school. Things that I went through as a kid. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Oh my gosh. I, oh my God. <laughs> Stop breathing. Did not realize that the snake plant grew another leaf and it's huge. Where did this come from? Where on earth did this come from? How did we miss this? This is actually our favorite plant. This is a ZZ plant, not a snake plant. I just, we are shook it. Wow, my plants are thriving. I just, I was literally just thinking about how excited I was for the sun to come back so that my plants can go back to thriving like the purple queen is doing so well look at all of this beautiful new growth that she has oh she needs water she a little thirsty she a little thirsty child just got home from running errands and immediately took akasha out for a walk and a really great exercising session exercise slash training session she is fed and now she is a happy girl i still have groceries left to put away as well as tending to the bouquets of flowers that i purchased for valentine's day i got my abuela a 
a bouquet of flowers for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to tend to her flowers and put them up on her altar. I also got Valentine's Day flowers for the living room. I'm in the process of making renovations to the house, not, not structural renovations, but just the style of the home. I am getting the walls painted soon and I have done some upgrades. Got some really nice frames for photos that are gonna go up post painting. I got a little blanket for that corner, a nice couch cover over there. I just ordered a vacuum cleaner. So we're making moves in this home and making it feel just a little bit more recharged. I've been in this house and this space for going, going on four years and I love it so much very deeply much, but I'm realizing that all of the trials and tribulations that I've experienced while living here, some of the negative energy that come has come into this space and also the ways that I've changed since moving in here and decorating this place, all of that means that it is time to create something new in this space and I'm just really happy about it. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a break from listening to audiobooks because I've been an audiobook machine and just put away my groceries in silence and tend to my flowers. So I'm realizing that a bunch of these plants need water, like this guy needs water and also this shoot on the snake plant is new. Very excited about that. My shamrock plant, oh, definitely needs some water. So we're gonna water some of the plants as well. Maybe open the Amazon packages that I just brought up they're big and I think one of them contains my vacuum cleaner so we shall see. But the plan for the evening is to get out of the house, go to a coffee shop and work on my novels Suddenly in Love and Robin Hood and then I will check back in with y'all later. Can we appreciate how incredible this shirt looks? I still have the shirt I showed you from earlier on but I wanted to put this on. I'm just, I'm really, really proud of this sweater. I came up with the slogan, I came up with the design. It popped into my head one day and I just was like, oh my gosh, yes. Cause like people kept bothering me that day and that's that was my inspiration for this. So the link is at the top of the description box if you wanna get yourself one. I just wanna see people with this shirt so, so bad. It would make me really happy. All right, cuties. I'm gonna figure out what my next audiobook is gonna be and Get ready to go to this cafe. Time for your Valentine's Day treat. You ready? You ready for your treat? Go get it, yes. Good girl, don't you, ah, 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 ah. Nope, don't you eat that on my couch. You can eat that on your chair. Sube. Yes, good girl. Oh, the baby. Who's your baby? Call me. It looks so good. I'm so excited to assemble. But alas, I must go to the coffee shop. I'm gonna read, work on my books, and just generally have a good time. So I will see you guys later tonight. Deuces. Wanting to put in some FaceTime before running to Akasha's dog training session. This is her second session with a training academy that's helping her work on her aggression issues and her severe anxiety, and it's been wonderful. So we're gonna run. We just got back from exercising in the yard, so she's ready for the session. And it is three o'clock currently. I have literally just been organizing, cleaning, listening to audiobooks, all that fun stuff. And when I get back, I'm going to show you guys the rugs that I put in the house, if it's still daylight by the time I get back, because Minnesota winters are awful. And we will do some unboxings. So, I will talk to you soon, bye. Just finished a long, difficult training session, and she's panting. Do you see how hard she's panting? Because she knows her food is right there. Good girl, Akasha. Call me. Call me! 
Yes, good girl. Girl, yes, get your food, good dog. That is there now. I really like the blankets and the plants under the TV. The beauty over there. Moving in to the dining room. The plants have been rearranged and they look marvelous. What is up, miscreants? Hello, we are back. Dog has been fed, dog has been trained, and now we're back. I have been putting off opening all of these packages. So many packages, and I can't remember if I mentioned it as I was on my way out the door, but I'm fighting potentially a cold. I have, I woke up with a sore throat, and as the day goes on, my throat feels more and more not well, so. We may have a silent day tomorrow, but these and this are gonna be the packages that we're opening for this vlog. I cannot stress how much I hate these vacuum sealed packages. They are terrible so sticky and weird on the inside. Beautiful, okay. And there's this book. Okay, oh, let's do one more, let's do one more. I never do my unboxes this way, my unboxings this way, so I don't know why I'm being a weirdo. All right, ooh, and this one has, oh, that's just one book. There are three books behind my back. We're going to pull out the last one we unboxed, which is, Ellipses, a novel by Vanessa Lawrence, loving this title. And I'm not sure what I think of this cover. I don't hate it. It doesn't really leave an impression on me. What about y'all? It does kind of give graphic novel, which is cool. A Dutton Books title, set in the glossy world of New York City media, sharp witty debut falls a young woman caught in a toxic mentorship with an older powerful exec as she grapples with career, belonging, and the complexity of modern relationships in the digital age. Exciting. One woman's struggle for wholeness in a world shaped by digital half-lives and aspirational fantasies. Ooh, excited. I'm excited about that one. Next up, we have... The new S.T. Gibson, oh, this cover. I physically cannot wait for this. So this is the author who gave us a dowry of blood, which took the, the book community by storm and is ushering in single-handedly a new era for paramor paranormal vampire romances. That is dramatic, but it was good. It was good. I was not expecting to enjoy A Dowry of Blood so very much. I'm excited about this one. This involves a family curse. Uh, threatens the life of David, a medium who will turn to the only person he's ever trusted, his sorcerer ex-boyfriend. That sounds absolutely excellent. Again, another Angry Robot title. Love Angry Robot books. Finally, for the first round of unboxings, we have, oh, hello, gorgeous. This is called Redwood Court, which we've heard of. Is this one on an anticipated list of mine? By Daylana R.A. Dameron. Breathtaking debut about one unforgettable family set seen through the eyes of its youngest daughter as she comes of age in the 1990s. Already very, very into it. All black working suburb of Colombia, South Carolina, learns important lessons from those who raise her from her exhausted parents who work long hours at multiple jobs and still make sure their kids experience the adventure of family vacations, retired grandparents, children of Jim Crow, whose dreams were realized when they, brought, they bought a house on the court in the 1960s, imagining it filled with future generations and the many neighbors who hold tight to the community they've built. It sounds like a quiet, pensive, family-centric novel, and we're excited about that. I love a non-plot-driven book. I just do. Next three. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh my God, this cover is so cool. <gasps> I don't even want to show it to y'all. I just want to keep it to myself. This book is called Thunder Song. It's a collection of essays. I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce this name, but it looks like Sasha, something I'm going to look up, LaPointe. And this author wrote Red Paint. So this is the cover. Look at this cover, you guys. Look at this cover. Oh, wow. And what is incredible about it 
is that this part, so this is all kind of a smooth matte texture. This part is a glossy raised texture and it's really, oh my gosh, it's author of award-winning memoir, Red Paint, returns with a razor sharp, clear-eyed collection of essays on what it means to be a proudly queer indigenous woman in the United States today. Unapologetically punk, the essays in Thunder Song segue from the miraculous to the mundane, from the spiritual to the physical, drawing on a rich family, cre rich, drawing on a rich family archive as well as the anthropological work of her late great grandmother. She explores themes ranging from indigenous identity and stereotypes to cultural displacement and environmental degradation to understand what our experiences teach us about the power of community, commitment, and conscientious honesty. Incredible, oh my gosh, this author is stunning. Hi. How you doing? Stunning human being who deserves nothing but joy, love, and success. Cannot wait, and right now, let's figure out how to pronounce this author's full. The pronunciation of this author's name has been verified by the publisher. The name is Sasha Taksha Blue La Point. Okay, Sasha Taksha Blue La Point. Sasha Taksha Blue La Point. Sasha Taksha Blue La Point. Stunning name. Stunning name. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. That last one, I think this one is the book that I am the most excited for. Now we have a promotional package. I already know this is an F.T. Lukens book, but I don't know the synopsis of their new book. Ooh, oh, cute! <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god, this is so cute. Oh my god, this is so cute. And it's really soft. This is perfect because my little head is cold. This is Otherworldly by F.T. Lukens. Wow. Y'all who follow NB Book Club will remember I interviewed this author for their debut book and it was absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Not loving the font on this book though, but it is an arc. This one releases on April 2nd of this very year from Margaret K. McEldery Books. And we are following Ellery, who is a non-believer in a region where people swear the supernatural is real. They've been stuck in a five-year winter, but there's gotta be a scientific explanation. If goddesses were real, they wouldn't abandon their charges, leaving farmers like Ellery's family to scrape by. Knox is a familiar from the other world, a magical assistant sent to help humans who have made crossroad bargains. But it's been years since he heard from his queen and Knox is getting nervous about what he might find when he returns home. When crossroad demons come for Knox, he panics, runs, and a chance encounter finds him and Ellery fending off attackers. Ellery can't quite believe what they've seen or the nonsense that this unnervingly attractive guy spews about his paranormal origins, and then they make a bargain, and there's no backing out, and then it changes everything, that kind of thing. This sounds really good. It sounds really good. Something about this kind of reminds us of Ryan Lasala's new book, Beholder. I read that last year with our patrons and we all were absolutely garbage for it. Now let's open this final package, Blackity Black, Save the Best for Last. Trying not to look at the art because I don't want to spoil myself. King of Dead Things by Nevin Holness. Wow. This cover. Oh shit! I didn't even see that girl back there. Ma'am, why are you lurking? Like, can I help you? That's chilling. I could have gone my whole life without that. Let's see what this is about. It looks amazing. I'm giving it five out of five stars based off of the cover. Eli doesn't know who he is or who he came from. And what he does know is that he can heal a wound with just a touch, love healing magic, and pluck magic from a soul like a petal from a flower. Three years ago, he was found by his now best friends, Sonny and Max, and there's nothing he wouldn't steal to survive and keep his new family together. We also have Malcolm, who would do anything to forget where he comes from. He's desperate to escape his estranged father's shadow. And plagued with an inherited magic he doesn't fully understand. He has one priority. Save his mother, no matter the cost. Malcolm's and Eli's paths collide when Eli and his friends are sent to track down the fang of the leopard god Ostaba- Oh my god, I'm so excited. A deadly weapon that can eat magic. In a job filled with enigmatic nine knights and Caribbean legends, 
Malcolm and Eli must face their own demons as they race through the magical underbelly of London to retrieve the Fang before an ancient and malevolent power comes back to life. This is from an author who is British, has a degree in fashion journalism. What is fashion journalism? Reporting on fashion, essentially. We're assuming, we know very little about the fashion industry and the various journalism industries, so we should Google that. From London College of Fashion and currently works in women's wear. In 2018, she was selected as a finalist for Penguin Random House's Right Now Mentorship Program. And this is her first novel. It releases April 16th of 2024. I, what more do you want? Oh yeah, there was like swag. I love how this is like jiggling. Jiggly Puff, London but make it magic. Afro-Caribbean folklore, found family, debut author, morally gray main characters, amnesia, a deadly revenge plot. Oh, and then we have the Fang, yes, yes. God killer has been found, stolen from the leopard god by Anansi himself. Undo any spell, eat magic whole, unmake the indestructible. Anything with Anansi is, come on, come on now. All right, this is amazing. So I'm going to rest my voice, drink the tea that I brewed at the start of this clip, and I will check in with you later. Maybe tomorrow, who knows? We'll see where the life takes us. Oh, tonight I am going to watch The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen because I have been missing that movie for so many years and I'm currently in the middle of editing my 24 books I wanna read in 2024 and I talk about The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in it and I'm all excited and I talk about it because I say that Dr. Jekyll, um, my dear Henry. Correction, I actually talk about The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen in this video, which y'all should watch because we're really proud of it. By Kellen Bayron reminds me of The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Or the reason that I'm excited about that book is because I love The League so much. Whatever. I'm rambling. The point is, I'm going to watch that movie tonight as well. We'll see if it holds up. We'll see. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm officially sick. My throat hurts a lot. I think that the bath and all of the vitamin C and everything that I did yesterday did help though, but I am going to avoid talking today. So it is about two o'clock in the afternoon. I've just been doing YouTube work, working on my novels, and I am going to take Akasha out for a walk, but I found these packages so i wanted to open them with you the little bathroom bathtub mat rug and i can tell i'm gonna be getting at least another one of these maybe a bigger size charming helen a jittery attorney with a self-destructive streak i love books about attorneys is secretly reeling from a disturbing crime of neglect that her parents recently committed. Historically happy to compartmentalize, distracting herself by hooking up with lesbian couples, doting on her grandmother, flirting with a young assistant. She finally meets her match in Catherine and Karina, Katrina, a married couple who starts to intrigue her with their ever increasing sexual and emotional intensity. When her father begs her yet again for, getting help, for help getting parole, she realizes that she has a bargaining chip to get answers to her past. Twisted Desires, Queer Domesticity, The Effects of Incarceration on the Family, offers empathy to characters who often don't receive it with unsettling results. Okay, this sounds really fucking good. This sounds really, really good. And this is a debut. The author uses she, her, her pronouns, and I could not be more excited about this. Next up, this book is called These Letters End in Tears. Musa Teji Xavier. I have to double check the pronunciation of this name. Set in a country where being gay is punishable by law, these letters end in tears. It's a heart-wrenching story of a Christian girl with a rebellious heart and a Muslim girl leading a double life. Bessem notices Fatima for the first time in the soccer field. Muscular and focused, she's the only woman playing and seems completely at ease. But when Fatima throws a rogue ball in her direction, Bessem freezes, mesmerized by the athlete's charm and beauty. In Cameroon, a country where same-sex relationships are punishable by law, the odds are stacked against them. And when Fatima's older brother, a staunch Muslim, finds out about their affair, 
he intervenes by physically assaulting them, an incident that precedes a police raid at the only gay bar in town. After spending days in jail, Fatima goes missing without a trace, and Bessem is left with only rumors of her whereabouts. Has she been sentenced to prison? Has she been banished or married off? Or something even more sinister? Thirteen years later, Bessem is now a university professor leading a relatively quiet life. However, she's never forgotten Fatima, even though she secretly dates other women. After spotting a mutual friend for the first time in years, the last person who may have seen Fatima, Bessem embarks on a winding search for her long lost love. Yep. Oh my god, oh my god. I messaged the publisher and I was like, hey, I read this book and it broke me and I really want to annotate it and post pictures of it and like just, I want a physical copy to shout about it. And they sent it. <laughs> oh my god, I do not want to take this book away from my body. <sighs> oh, she's beautiful. Oh, and Mr. Nancy's on the cover too. Oh my god. The Human Origins of Beatrice Porter and Other Essential Ghosts. This is the best book I've read all year and of Blackathon. But it is February 14th and we have time. I am telling you, if you are a fan of great writing, period. Great writing, period. If you are a fan of quotable books, if you are a fan of mythology, if you are a fan of queerness and transness, if you are a fan of ancestral storytelling and of gods having voices, and I just, it's so fucking good, it's so good. Sibling relationships, all of that. Not, I think you can probably sprinkle salt on him and he'll go away. Does that work for all men? That's it, I'm gonna go take this beast outside and I'm gonna get some reading done and we'll check in with you later. Also, today is my mother's birthday. Valentine's Day is my mom's birthday. It is the birthday of my abuela as well, who gave birth on this day. So I'm going to be celebrating abuela's birthing day and my mother's being born day all day. And I'm so excited. Oh my God. Okay, I did not mean for this vlog to turn into a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen love fest, but I started looking into, first of all, I found out that Sean Connery's dead. Sean Connery died at age 90 in 2020. Um, after losing a battle with dementia. Didn't know that. Thought the motherfucker was alive and well. Crip walking all over the golf courses and shit. Nah, he dead. So, apparently, as I started looking into him, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is what made Sean Connery quit the business. And this is a man who has won an Oscar and is one of the most celebrated James Bond actors of all time. I think he did like seven or nine Bond movies or something like that. So, He's fucking huge. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen flopped so hard that he quit the business. And apparently, so I'm looking into why he decided to quit. And then I find out that Disney is rebooting the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and that it will be released in some time of 2024. Oh my God. Oh my God. So first, let's find out why Sean Connery quit. His experience with the league was so frustrating that he retired from the industry. Apparently he was once offered the chance to portray Gandalf in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. Interesting. But he turned down the role because he didn't understand the script. He accepted a $17 million payday for the film of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, even though he was on the fence about it. And then he ended up clashing with Stephen Norrington, who was the director. And apparently the relationship between him and John Connery was so testy that the entire set was frosty because of it. Like they had differences of opinions about everything, professional differences, personal differences, etc. And long story short, he ended up quitting the business. But let's find out about the reboot of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. So for those of you who don't know, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen came out in 2003 and it had some of the biggest names in the industry in it. Shane West was in it. He was the guy from um, A Walk to Remember. 
and Stuart Townsend was in it. He was super popular at the time because he had just done The Queen of the Damned with Aaliyah, which was Aaliyah's last role. But the film flopped and having rewatched it last night, I can tell you the film is absolutely amazing. Is it cheesy? Of course. Are the special effects very 2003? Of course. But it's still amazing and I had no idea that Alan Moore actually wrote the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen comic and that there's two volumes out. Interesting. It says that the sh new show is on Disney, but I'm not actually seeing it on Disney. So if any of y'all know what's going on with that, do let me know. So I can't find anything on it, but I would love it if y'all would watch the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the original, and then tell me what y'all think. Okay, now I swear I am going to go back to reading. Bye. It's snowing. Who's your girl? Is it snowing? Is it snowing? It is now 5.16 p.m. and this Instagram post is literally my entire day. My entire day. But I've been so productive. See, I made this really cute post on Instagram. Wow. For my mom's birthday. Look how great. Super productive of me. Hey, look at us. Oh my God, we are so cute. Memories, sweet memories. And I spent a lot of times perfecting this graphic for NB Book Club and posted some romance book recommendations. I made this reel for being single on Valentine's Day. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, I've been very busy. <laughs> New day, new rugs. What is that, Akasha? What's in there? What is it? Yeah, I gotta check that one out too. Make sure it's not a criminal. Oh, great. It's being attacked. Ah, uh, here we go. Don't straddle the poor thing. Hasn't it been through enough? What is she doing? Please don't hump my new rug. Well, unboxing courtesy of Akasha. It's a rug. Yes, good girl. Get it, get it. Yes. Very good. You got it. You got it open. All right, I'll do the rest. Well, Akasha approves. <laughs> yes, good girl. Unrelated, but I just love Golden Hour in my home. These are set up from an Instagram post that I made yesterday. Look at all this stunning book mail and then the mail I got today. Beautiful. What's up, cuties? We are continuing on with this episode of Jesse renovates their home, redecorates, all that fun stuff. We got this quirky little lamp from Amazon because our couch is in this corner and it's really dark in this corner because all of the overhead lights are way over there. When we point those lights this way, it's still distracting to read because there's lights coming into our eyes. So we decided to get a lamp for that corner. That is what we're going to be setting up right now. It's supposed to be the bee's knees and then I'm gonna test it out. We're actually in the middle of doing reading sprints with our patrons. We just had our annual Be My Valentine party. It was great. We had a crafts and cocktails moment and it was really beautiful, but now, we are reading and as you saw from the B-roll, I am in the middle of reading the audiobook for Zoo City by Lauren Bukes. This is something that's been on my TBR since I joined BookTube. Since my first ever Blackathon, it is set in London, I believe, and we are following an ex-con as she takes this gig. She has an ability to find things and she takes a gig finding a missing person, a very talented young black girl who has gone missing. And in Zoo City, everyone has an animal that is tethered to them. And our protagonist's animal is a sloth. It's really cool. It is very much a fantastical urban setting. And I love it. I love one foot in the magical world, one foot in the human world. I know that a lot of people don't enjoy urban fantasies, but I love seeing urban fantasies, especially from black folk. Magic has always been a part of our lives. It's never been outside of the realm of possibility. So it, it's never difficult for me to have elements of reality in fantasies or elements of fantasy in my realities. 
Hello cuties! Yesterday I finished The Kindest Lie and gave it 5 out of 5 stars despite not loving the ending. But that was one of the most heartwarming and tender complex books I've ever written. It was a cozy mystery, a heartwarming mystery, a family drama while also being so much more. But yeah, the ending was not it. The light turned green so I had to hang up but I am on my way. I'm at my doctor's office now. I'm going to be running some errands. After this I have to go to the dentist and I brought along Duel. This is a graphic novel between two warring sisters in like a fence battle and it's by a husband and wife duo very very excited about this and I also have the reformatory in my bag for which we have a patreon exclusive reading sprints tonight after finish the, finishing The Kindest Lie, I FaceTimed with Starla, who is also sick, and we were just reading silently together, and it was really nice. Hey, this is actually so good. Hey cuties, just left the coffee shop. That's literally what it was called. Had a great chai and a sandwich, although I had to send my soup back, but that is okay. They were super sweet and gave me my money back and I just, I haven't been in that place since college and it was really fun. And next door they had this thrift store called Read and, or called Rewind or something and I got, this is one of the things that I got there. I'm halfway through Duel. It is incredible. The sibling rivalry is really hard to watch. These two girls lost their dad who was a great fencer. So when they start a new school, they challenge each other to a duel and it's really, really good, but hard to see how much both of them are struggling independently, how much their mom is struggling, all the things they're going through behind closed doors. Oop, light screen, gotta go. All right, now I'm at my dentist, my battery's dying, but I have to say that I DNF'd Zoo City because that was actually a white author, and it was about scam artists, so, like Nigerian scam artists, so I wasn't comfortable on top of that as well. Let's go get these cavities settled, and we'll talk soon. Hello, welcome to the next day. It is about 6 p.m., and we have had quite a day. Akasha and I just got home. We've got some exciting things for the house, we are continuing with this. Jesse decorates their beautiful, beautiful home with their beautiful Malinois. And the next piece of furniture has arrived. I have upgraded to a chair that will make editing videos much more easy. I have been editing on a broken chair. The back broke off, so it's just like a flat stool. The chair itself is significantly lower than my desk, and I have shoulder problems as it is. This whole setup that I have, because my desk is bolted to the wall, makes it really difficult to edit videos in general because this corner is really dark. But anyway, this chair is going to help because this chair is going to allow me to be level with the computer. So I got something that hopefully will match the aesthetic of my apartment and the place that I'm going and I want to also show you some new plants that I got and Akasha had a little haul as well. Akasha sniffing out her treats. I woke up at about 11. I didn't get to bed until about 3 because I was up late reading the reformatory and it is very very good. It is haunting. It is chilling. We love the way that Tanana Reeve has pulled actual members of her family into the story and is writing from her own family history. The fictionalization of one's own family history I think is a really beautiful thing and it is a very powerful literary tool when employed especially by authors of color, especially black authors. It's very effective. This book feels real. All of the conversations, all of the characters, every single one of them, and it is deeply disturbing. I have a theory that one of the characters is a ghost. I have a theory. I was just talking about it with Gabby, and Gabby was like, I'm not gonna say anything because I just finished the book. So I'm on page 250-ish, 400 pages left. We're gonna see how much headway we can make tonight. While reading, yesterday was Patreon reading sprints for the reformatory, and we all are just really into the book. Let's show you what I got Akasha. After lazing about in bed during the morning, watching Abbott Elementary and reading Reformatory, I made a reel for the Enbu Book Club page about next the non-binary teenager who was beaten to death in an Oklahoma bathroom within their own school. They were a sophomore. So I did that, went to the bank, and we had her training session. She has made so much progress. I think that was her third session. There's 10 total and it's just, it's been a godsend. It has been amazing. So one of the things that I picked up was a training pouch because having the treats on the hip is actually really, really helpful for me, especially because a lot of her issues involve walking and being on the leash. So this is the training pouch, and I got this one because it not only has a little belt that can go around your waist so I don't have to worry about it, it also has a firm 
you know, deep, strong plastic clip that I can cook, cook on, clip, clip onto my pants. A lot of people don't realize I have a stutter because I'm very, very good at hiding it and also my medication helps. But my stutter lately has been thriving. I'm trying to be better about like not hiding the fact that I have a stutter because why? <laughs> you know what I mean? What is happening? It snaps open and just stays open so you can put your treats and you can just like wipe it out with a wash rag. And it's got these areas so you can put different kind of treats, but I'm gonna put my phone in here so that we can do long walks and it's gonna be really nice. The dog trainer recommended that we use different types of treats for different situations. One technique is to use higher value treats when in more stressful situations for the dog. Higher value treat is like freeze dried chicken versus a lower value treat is a training treat like this. I got her bacon flavor, I got her a salmon training treats and then I got her tender sticks. This is in a beef recipe. Greenies were on sale. She has the blueberry flavor and the sweet potato flavor. And then for her higher value treats, we got this. This is the freeze dried beef liver. This is what we're gonna be using when we're doing training sessions closer to the road. She's a very outwardly focused dog. Or if she sees another dog, this is going to be so helpful. I love getting Akasha treats, and I'm sure that this part of the video is very boring, but hopefully it won't be to those of you who are dog owners. At Aldi, I picked up some chicken breast, some avocado, and some cauliflower. I am changing my habits around eating because when I eat a certain way, it really, really helps my mental health. It helps just everything. So I'm doing that, and while there, Aldi had some plants that I just, I had to pick up because I have been incorporating flowers back into my home. I bought myself and my abuela flowers for Valentine's Day and I've received a couple bouquets and I love flowers and having them in the house even though they are a luxury in the sense of they're expensive. Having them in the house helps my mental health so much. It helps my comfort in this space. A lot of my established plants had to be cut down or were propagated, etc. So I'm excited to have another established green pothos. And I also got a Tradescantia, which I killed one of these this summer. I got the Tradescantia that is, I think this one's like a silver something. I can't remember what. So I need to do the process of checking this these plants for pests and treating them for pests, even if they don't have one. I got lazy and failed to check them for pests, and of course, both had a gnat infestation. The Tradescantia is not doing well now after treating her for pests. <sighs> check your plants before you buy them, kids. Also, I love that this plant matches me. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> also used a new product in our hair today, and the curls are popping. Literally all I did with this product, it's... Um, a Camille Rose product, the Honey Miel one, and it does genuinely smell like honey, which surprised me. What I did is I just literally scrunched it into my hair. I was it in the shower, and then my curly hair stylist taught me this trick for defining curls really easily, where when your hair is wet and you put your products in, you cover your face with a towel, and then you just like shake your head forward, forward, and backward, and to the side. But make sure you're like, not whiplashing yourself because I've done that in my fervor. So I try and just stay as still as possible and just like rock back and forward. Let's get to assembling this chair. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook for the reformatory, but I have been listening to the audiobook for Halsey Street by Naima Coster. It is an Afro-Dominican narrative and it's just kind of one of those slice of slices of life. It's about this young Afro-Dominican woman who has grown up on this street in Brooklyn called Halsey Street. It's about the community that was established throughout the generations and the liveliness of that community and what happens when gentrification hits. It has a lot of those same themes as such a fun age, but it is a book that Bookstagram was dehydrated over when it came out and this is a very celebrated author over on Bookstagram and in other literary circles. So I'm excited to be finally reading her work and it's very beautiful. It is a dual POV. We are following the mother who, not abusive, but just not supportive and, and definitely caused some trauma and some self-esteem issues in our young, female protagonist. I think she might be in her mid-20s, maybe early 30s. I think she's in 
mid 20s or early 30s so we're following her mom when her mom was a kid when her mom had her as a kid and also we're following her mom now we're following penelope a daughter protagonist now in venezuela and it's really good her father is struggling with illness and disability and he's a very proud man he's operated a record store for years and that record store is was a safe haven for a community. It was a place for people to be connected to the black arts as they were kind of systematically pushed out of the neighborhood. And I've said this before, but my family is from the Bronx. And I spent my summers in the Bronx. I spent my summers in Jersey City, both in not great areas. And I will tell you the thing that I remember about those summers is the community. I don't remember the poverty. I don't remember being scared or the drugs. I, even though yes, those things existed, absolutely. But I remember if somebody saw someone else fall, they would go and show up for them. If your, if someone's abuela was sick, somebody else in the community would be checking on her. And we, what isn't talked about with gentrification is like the community, the block parties. The safety, the love, the gossip, the chisme, all of that. That also is something to mourn. And that's something I've never seen anywhere but New York City as a child. And my father, my adoptive father, would say this a lot, but he would say, like, the New York that I grew up with is gone. And I remember the first time he said that, that hit really hard, because same. And I can only imagine what that was like for his generation, to watch the community kind of disintegrate before their eyes, and we all know what happens in displacement. But I just love that these characters are all flawed. Penelope is flawed. She's a morally great character. The mom is a morally great character, and so is the pops. They've all made mistakes. They are real people. There is a direct correlation between loving the morally great trope and whether or not the morally great things the person is doing is something that would ever actually affect the reader. And it's just really interesting because loving that trope is a way that you can build empathy for other people. But in practice, it just doesn't seem, it's just very interesting. There's screws. Oh, hell no. Halsey Street is testing all of my patients. All of my patients, as I've mentioned, everyone in this book is morally gray or unlikable in some way. I love when books force you to empathize with deeply unlikable characters, but these characters are pushing me to my absolute limit, especially Maria and Penelope. Maria is the mom. This book is a really good example of when the misunderstanding trope is valuable. I'm not talking about miscommunication. The miscommunication trope I cannot stand, but the misunderstanding trope I can understand. A lot of times when there is discord between mothers and daughters, especially Afro-Latine mothers and daughters, it is because of cultural differences due to the fact that one, the child was raised in the US. There is a fundamental misunderstanding, especially if the child didn't learn Spanish and Penelope was basically banned from speaking Spanish in her own home. This caused an extreme rift between her and her mother, and we are learning about why these two girls hate each other so bitterly. Maria and Penelope are so horrible to each other, and it is frustrating watching Penelope treat her mother this way, especially because I am being forced to confront a lot of my deeply authoritarian Mexican upbringing, which states like, you do not talk back to your mother. You do not threaten your mother. You do not cuss at your mother. All of these things, you do not insult your mother. All of these things that as she is saying them, I'm like, girl, you're gonna get your ass beat. What are you doing? And that is forcing me to confront the normalization of abuse in my own culture, which is uncomfortable for me. I really, really like that Maria doesn't beat her daughter, even when she's an adult, because like, my mom would still whoop the shit out of me if I did half of the things that this wo this woman does to her mother. I know I can catch my mom's hands any day. I do really like seeing representation for a Dominican woman who just chooses not to move that way. I think that that's important as well. I finally learned why these two women hate each other the way that they do and why the love between them is so fraught and, and taught and all I want for these for these two girls, for these two women, is to reconcile. 
and to have the relationship that they deserve, but I'm very, very close to being done with the audiobook and I'm scared. I'm very scared. It just seems to get sadder by the minute. Sadder moment by moment. And Penelope is a character that is really going to test you. She is not nice to anybody, full of abusive rhetoric. She's very, very angry. She's very, very hostile. And she seems to only have empathy for herself, honestly. She's not a likable character, but it is very clear that this young Afro-Latin woman is struggling with, I don't know if it is mental illness, but she's struggling. She does, first of all, she needs therapy. It is very, very clear that this is a woman who desperately needs therapy and isn't getting it, and that's why her behavior is the way that it is. So I am somebody who constantly defends Queenie, and I'm forcing myself because of this, I am having to defend her the way that I defended Queenie. I wanna keep that same energy, right? If I'm gonna critique people for, for being overly harsh on Queenie and sex shaming her and not understanding how Queenie's PTSD is the reason why she behaves the way that she does and that instead of judgment, she needs therapy and empathy and love. And I'm trying to give that to Penelope, but this is really, really hard, especially because I sympathize with Marea. I'm trying not to take sides, but Marea has done some horrible things to her child. But it's just, it's really hard for me to see that whenever Marea tries to extend an olive branch, Penelope just basically slaps her in the face with it. It's, it's hard. It's really, really hard. And it's the same with the dad. The dad is also, oh gosh, it's just all of these people need to just go to therapy. Just go to therapy. I just got back from the store. Of course, I picked up more things for the house. The chair, unfortunately, was a bust. The chair, no. That... The base didn't fit with the legs. It's defective, so I had to send it back. And of course, I just got back from walking the dog. When we left the door, no one was there. Came back after walking around the block and the UPS person had come to pick up the package and left a note saying, sorry, I missed you. What sucks about it is that I don't know when they're coming. So it said, oh, just be home. My doorknob doesn't, my door, my doorknob? My doorbell doesn't work, so I just don't understand how I'm gonna make that work, but we're gonna figure it out. I did pick up another rug. It's not super big, but it's gonna be nice to go underneath something. And then I picked up a runner rug as well. This is what it looks like. It matches the color scheme of the apartment. And my landlord came over today and helps me pick out the colors that I'm going to be painting the house with. I'm very, very, very excited about all of those colors. I actually haven't slept today. I was up editing, reading, cleaning, organizing. My landlord came over at eight, we talked, and then after that I, I started running my errands, exercising the dog, doing all of that. And now I'm back. I have about 10 minutes before the watch party for Siren Survive the Island begins with my patrons, and we are going to be watching that and also doing reading sprints. I got some Glade plugins. I got a bunch of candles. I got these two pack all purpose LED puck lights. The rest of these are candles. A lot of them are altar candles for my abuelita. I just realized that my Patreon event doesn't start for a half hour, so I actually have time to finish the last little bit of the audiobook and then I'm going to check in. But like I said, I have very little left of the book and I'm struggling to see how this is going to wrap up. I am devastated. As I've mentioned, it gets sadder on every page gentrification forced the family to shut down their record store, their beloved record store. They had to sell it and it fractured the family in all of these horrible ways. It directly led to the dad's alcoholism and disability. It directly led to Maria fleeing to go back to the Dominican Republic. It directly led to Penelope's anger at her mother for reasons that I'm not going to share. It's really freaking sad and there's so much that needs to be wrapped up in 30 minutes. I just don't get it. This is the ending was a little life level sad. What in the Hanya Yanagihara? The ending was sadder than my love life. If a Pixar animation film were a book, this is what the book would be. I'm giving it five stars because I'm wrecked. And I hate that I can't say anything about it. I will say that I understand why everybody on Bookstagram is so obsessed with this author and was so obsessed with this book. 
and I should not have slept on it and neither should y'all. This book is so, I, I'm gonna go to my Patreon event. Fuck this. The most painful five star read of my life. Shooting into the dark? Of us, we'll get to the truck. I parked it out back. Tank's full and I've got the key in my pocket. I've been staying ready for these SOBs. If you see, so she went to the window, led by the moon. This loaded. Next day, same black excellence. What is up, y'all? Your boy is just fresh out of the shower. This is the outfit of the day. We are calling it dog training chic. Akasha and yours truly are about to head to the tennis courts to play some tennis and do some training. I just got this very sexy treat pouch from Pet Supplies Plus, and it's great because it has this clip where you can clip in to your, the band of your jeans, or you can have this waist, what are they called? Fanny pack moment. But I love this because it has a spot for the phone and then this. Oh yeah, that's right, you guys were with me when I got this. So I'm about to pour some treats in here. I am finishing up the audiobook for Reformatory. It is incredible. I maybe have three hours left. It's so good. It. I'm really, really loving this book. The video that I posted yesterday is doing well, which is very, very exciting. I love it when y'all show up for my video. So thank you so much to everybody who's been watching lately, especially. And Akasha is, is ready. She's ready to go outside. Get the ball. That was amazing. It is unseasonably warm right now. I can't believe that it is. It's gotta be 55 degrees. It feels like it's 60 degrees, honestly, right now. He had help from the living, not just the dead. It didn't have a lock. The door flew back and almost. Is it your bed? Are you ready for your new bed? Are you ready for the reveal? Okay, sit down. Yes, quédate, quédate. Okay, so she hasn't, she hasn't experienced it yet. This is her old bed, and this is the new bed. Okay, come on, come on, get in there, place. Oh, you brought your toy, place. Yes, we don't go girl, yes. Look at the baby. Yes, who's a good girl? Got a new bed. Yes, you do. Who's got a new bed and a new friend? Well, this is the friend you've had since Christmas, but she loves this guy. She loves Rudolph. Yes, the baby. It's a baby. Oh, I'm so happy you have a bed that you can lay in. Do you like it? Hello, hello, another day, next day, and another book completed on my 28 books in 28 days. Reformatory was the book that I just finished and I'm giving it five out of five stars. I have no notes. This genre expansive combination of horror with spiritual realism and paranormal fiction is a work of art. Tanana Reef captured a continued source of black pain beautifully captured a historic and present wound that continues to remain open and there was something very healing and vindicating about reading that book so right now we're on our way to a loved one's house we are right outside Panera Bread picking up Panera for myself and her as well and I've got my beautiful black backpack here where I am going to be with all the stuff that I need. I still have Ikenga and I have the fire next time. Those are the books that I've brought with me. I have my laptop so that I can work on Suddenly in Love and make a graphic for NB Book Club because I haven't posted over there in a couple days. Th three, three days, I think. Akasha's doing well, had exercise. She's loving her new bed. It is so big. I have to lift the bed up in order to close my bedroom door, but I'm just happy to have her in a bed where she can be. And all of her limbs fit and she can spread out and I'm happy. All right, cuties, I'll talk to you soon. Siéntate. Ew. 
burper. Look how pretty Akasha looks. Good girl. Oh, she looks so good. So good. Hello, what is up? It's been a minute since your boy been in a bow tie. What do we think? I just filmed authors that readers have canceled and I'm really excited about that. Currently going to run some errands. I couldn't find My Dear Henry. It's on my blog on TBR. I went to two bookstores looking for it yesterday, so I'm going to try Moon Palace Books, see if they have it. I also need to get air in my tires because I hit a curb and now my ears pressure is low. I'm bringing three books to the cafe that's next to the bookstore. I'm just gonna get out of the house and read for a while. So the books that I have are the poetry book by Claude McKay. I have Bless the Blood, which is one of our two Blackathon group books. I forgot about the Blackathon group books. Bless the Blood is a new release from a disabled black and non-binary writer. So it's told in verse about their experience having cancer and like the medical racism and not being taken seriously and all of that so i'm excited to read it but i know it's gonna piss me off and then i also brought the fire next time by james baldwin so i'm gonna grab my annotating supplies i've got my headphones too i'm still listening to meet cute club which i haven't talked about i started it yesterday and i'm listening to it at a double speed so i just have like an hour left but it's this really cute romance book about this black boy who runs a book club and he's taken over the book club from his grandma and membership keeps dropping and he's really devastated by this and doing everything he can to like get the book club numbers up and keep the book club alive this hit me really hard because my channel has been struggling for honestly since 2020 when a bunch of people flocked to it because george floyd was murdered and then we suddenly cared about <laughs> following black readers and then after that because so many people flooded my channel that they didn't stay and actually watch content so my numbers dropped like analytics wise and i haven't been able to get back up ever since then because when your videos like underperform youtube stops promoting you and it can get really 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 hard like sometimes it can take years for your channel to get promoted again the reason why i'm sharing this isn't something that i would normally talk about on the main channel because it's not your guys's problem that's just the behind the scene things but i will say that part of the book is really hitting me hard because like i have worked so hard on my content to make sure it's like as perfect as possible and still not seeing like any growth or numbers increase like that kind of thing and it can be really disheartening so i liked that and it starts with the hate to love because rex his love interest it looks down on him for the romance books and makes it really awful kind of disparaging comments and then he joins the book club and starts reading romance and then they're a romance buds between the two of them and they're so different but so good i love that right away like they start sleeping together i love that we didn't have to wait till half the book i love that they admitted their feelings for each other right away we didn't have to pussyfoot around it for 50 or 100 pages it's a very good book and there's also really important things that these boys are dealing with and I just appreciate it. I like the writing, I like the comedy, I like the side characters, no notes. All right, I'm gonna go to my favorite cafe and I'll talk soon. Took off the slacks and the bow tie, threw on <laughs> some joggers and the bunny slippers and this is what we're gonna be like for the rest of the day. What is up y'all? Had the Panera, tires have been taken care of, went to another bookstore looking for my dear Henry. They didn't have it, however, I got some other stuff. A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal because I had no idea that Hafsa had a book releasing in 2024. I actually think I did know. I know I marked it. I, I kind of have a vague memory of me putting it on my anticipated release shelf, but then just forgot that I had done it. Now, We Hunt the Flame is on my 24 books to read in 2024. That video is down below, y'all. We're so excited about that video, so it's not too late to watch it if you're interested. So I'm excited to be reading this and We Hunt the Flame in the same year. I was shook when I saw this gorgeous cover, but then I opened it. A tempest of tea comes with this beautiful art on the inside. Why save the world when you can have tea? On the streets of white roaring, Arthi Casimir is a criminal mastermind and a collector of secrets. Her prestigious tea room transforms into an illegal blood house by night, catering to the vampires feared by society. And that's where I stopped reading. I did see Ragtag Crew. Excellent. I am beyond ready for that book. I also got this. When I go to Moon Palace Books, I always pick up some of their cards because they are all made like by small artists and I always want to support them and I also really love cards. Gorgeous cover that I cannot believe I'm holding. The Dead Take the A-Train by Cassandra Ka and Richard Cadry has been on my list and I'm so excited that I actually encountered it and I just snagged it. I love 
this cover and I'm not sure I don't know if it's cosmic horror or but I do love co-authored books and I loved Cassandra Kaw's The Salt Grows Heavy book even though I really detested nothing but black and teeth this one is about a burnt up 30 year old whose only retirement plan is dying early. I'm screaming. She's been trying to establish herself in the New York City magic scene where she'll work the most gruesome gigs, exercise the nastiest demons, make deals with the cruelest gods in order to claw her way to the top. But then something happens to her best friend when she shows up at her door in need of help. Keeping Sarah safe becomes top priority. And it is cosmic horror. I'm excited. I love the underground magical society of New York City vibe. And the last two books I got were Bad Cree, which I was highly anticipating last year and didn't get to it. This is an indigenous thriller novel. I also picked up Crooked Plow by Itimar V. Ira Jr. Bad Cree has an absolutely intriguing and wild synopsis. This follows a girl who has tons of guilt because she couldn't save her sister. And she wakes up one day with a severed crow's head in her hands and all of the sudden she starts fending off like masses of birds in a snow covered forest and then she blinks and the head disappears. So night after night she keeps having these wild dreams from when her sister's untimely death happened and that was at the family lakefront campsite. So this counts for Camp Oregon which is exciting. The waking world starts to mirror her dreams. I really love books that pull dreams into them, specifically books by people of color. I'm looking forward to this and the writing that I read in the bookstore was really good. Crooked Plow I picked up because I really loved the cover and this is a classic. Just look at it. It's incredible. I actually thought it was a graphic novel at first. This is a leading voice among the black authors who have jolted Brazil's literary establishment in recent years with imaginative and searing works that have found commercial success and critical acclaim. Two sisters find a mysterious knife beneath their grandmother's bed. Momentarily mystified by its power, they decide to taste its metal. The shuddering violence that follows marks their lives and binds them together forever. And it's supposed to combine spirituality with political struggle, fantasticness, realism, etc. Like social commentary. I'm really, really excited about reading this. And I picked it up because I will be able to finish this before the end of the month. It's like 230 pages. All of that being said, it's time for me to enjoy reading and kicking it with Akasha and I'll check in later. I finished Meet Cute Book Club. It's an incredible book, five out of five stars. I loved that it was short and sweet and it was everything I wanted in a beautiful, romance no notes it was great i loved that it talked so much about how romance isn't taken seriously and when you're black and queer and male you're seen as being super weird for loving something that's so much more pure than you supposedly are as a person i loved it i loved the conflict between the love interests i loved the resolution i loved the atmosphere of the book itself on to the next one I cannot believe I waited so long to start one of the two group books, Bless the Blood, so I have to correct myself. This is not a memoir of them getting cancer, leukemia, when they were in high school. This is them talking about their experience being diagnosed with leukemia as adult, as a fat, black, non-binary person, but it is told in verse and marketed towards teens if that makes sense. So it is a YA book about an adult experience. I'm breathless when you open it. There's this incredible writer's note that says, this here ain't a John Green novel. And the writer's note is all about how this book isn't going to be a walk to remember. It's not gonna be a Nicholas Sparks book. It's not gonna be corny Tumblr metaphors about death. Like this is my real life and my real experiences. Notice black people do not exist in these worlds but cancer exists in mine. I plan to fail any expectation you have of me. There's no prophetic wisdom to sip in doses of stanzas like a prescription. I am not an inspiration. I am not the undesirable ugly ghoul that society portrays of the sick and black and disabled. Welcome to my lecture on medical racism. I'm not here to make survival comfortable. I am indeed the bad cancer patient and it goes on more and more but they say i'm not part of the white men's robust imagination where they thread plot lines about lives they've never lived i do not want to be imagined by them that's why you're here reading this and then there's even more to that but like oh my god so some parts that i 
read that made me stop and I highlighted it and really felt that they were profound. I'm gonna read you a couple of those, but what I'm doing is marking the pages that I love the most with, these, with three green lines. And this one is in regards to how people treat them after finding out that they're sick. I am afraid of mortality and you smell like it. You've got this tenacity growling in a forest of dying trees. You and the cancer hold hands and become demons. How do you live with darkness inside you? Even if you are suffocating from within the plastic bag of your own fear. God is puffing on a cigar in the corner of my hospital room with his feet kicked up in the easy chair asking how bad I want to stay or leave. I wished for death so many times that of course when I forgot his name he sent the vultures for my carcass. I am reading this and holding my breath. It is electrifying. It is so poignant and I'm not looking forward to the part where they have to deal with trans discrimination and all of that part too. Like I'm not ready, but whew, so good. Okay, I'm gonna take her outside so she can play a little before the sun comes down. And then I'll keep reading. Little reading update. I got flower pollen all over my brand new button up. So I had to change into this sleeveless top and this gorgeous sweater that my godfather got me. I currently am munching on cheese it's got a face mask on and we're on episode nine of the siren survive the island watch along so we only have one more episode before the finale and it's been great i love hanging out with my patrons right now i am watching and reading the physical book of bless the blood which is incredible it continues to be amazing but when i went into the bathroom to like put my face mask on and prep my skin for it I continued listening to Dreamer. This is a book by Multimind, which is such a cool name. And it is a book that I discovered on Everand, having no idea what it's about other than seeing the cover, I clicked on it. And it is this speculative, spiritual, realistic, thriller horror book about this girl named Vera whose family has dream magic. Things that happen to her in her dream happen in real life. So if in her dream a mushroom's growing on her skin, a mushroom is growing on her actual body in real life. She ends up watching this movie and this creature called the hunter enters her consciousness and gets into her dreams. It's about her trying to escape the hunter and it is really good so far. It's like two hours long so I'm an hour and 34 minutes into it and I'm enjoying it. So I'm gonna continue with this watch along, get this mask off, keep reading Bless the Blood, which is so incredible. The writing is chilling, it's beautiful. It is nice that there are parts of it that aren't told in verse. The majority of the story is told in verse, with the exception of these really nice little essays that I very much enjoy for providing more context. This book is making me rethink a lot of things in the most amazing, incredible way. It's so good and they talk a lot about their fiance and their relationship with their partner. And there was this amazing poem that had like vows to their partner. And it was one of the most beautiful love letters I've ever read in my entire life. So it is amazing because it also provides you a little bit of a break from the heaviness of the story. But it's amazing, period. It's just, it's so good. I could ramble on and on about the books that I'm reading for so long. <laughs> oh, I'll talk to you guys soon. This is one of the best books I've ever read. Now, on to this. It is about 4.30 in the morning, something around that, and I just finished Harlem Shadows. I also completed Bless the Blood, which, oh, I told you that already. I'm just so tired. This poetry collection is incredible. I can't wait to talk to you guys about it tomorrow. Five out of five stars. Another book completed. I have just finished Dreamer by Multimind, which I am awarding four out of five stars. This short, fantastical, spiritual realism novel accomplished a lot. It follows a young woman who comes from a family where they have dream magic and what happens in her dreams happens to her body in real life and she begins getting hunted by this man called the hunter one of my criticisms if i had to make one is that the hunter's character could have been a little bit more developed a little bit more formidable as a villain but Overall, it did not take away from the messaging of the book. Very often, black folks' ancestral inheritance of dream magic is disregarded in books. One thing I want reviewers to be very careful of when they talk about dream 
magic and also dreams being in books. Dreams are a very big part of Afro-Indigenous spirituality and Indigenous North American spiritualities and other in spiritualities as well. Oftentimes when people make the comment of, oh, I don't like dreams in books, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I think it's very dismissive of Indigenous realities. Or at the very least, it can be. It's just something to be mindful of. I'm about to film a video on my most anticipated releases by Black authors, so I gotta go. What's up, kids? Finish filming, about to go to yoga, and then finish editing and read, read, read. Yoga was freaking awesome. Love that yoga instructor. I've been taking classes from him for years and it's awesome because he lets people modify without making them feel bad or feel weird for needing modifications and he preaches just showing up as you are. It's really, really nice. After that, since it's 60 degrees outside of Minneapolis right now, took Akasha on a long walk around the lake. It was really sweet and now I am editing my authors that you of readers have canceled video and working on an Instagram post. And while I was on this beautiful walk with Akasha, I started another audiobook by Multimind. It was three hours long and I am listening to it on 1.5 speed, so I have an hour left. This one is called Kinetics and we are following twins. One of the twins is Ava and she has a very codependent toxic relationship with her twin whose name I think is Tyrone. That sibling dynamic is very interesting and well explored. I love books about twins, I've said this before. The conflict happens when Ava's bully dies of suicide and many people who knew the bully are claiming that this is something that she would never do. So there begins, and where we are at the book right now, another person who has been cruel to Ava has died. It's interesting about Tyrone is that when he gets upset, he doesn't harm anyone. However, the person starts to harm themselves. It is a very interesting trope, the someone else has control over my body and my actions, kind of like Jessica Jones, that awful guy. Uh, in Jessica Jones, I can't remember his name. The narrator is incredible. This narrator will scream and give emotion in her voice that you can feel. You hear it. They are absolutely incredible. We have never heard such blood curdling screams and they are absolutely realistic. This narrator gives what the narrator from Pinata failed to deliver. It's amazing. The crying, all of it. It is a very visceral <laughs> cinematic experience listening to this book and it is really good. I'm all, I'm making a five star prediction. It is a much stronger book than Dreamer in my opinion, but I just cannot wait to see how it ends. I'm currently gonna make dinner. I'm gonna have fish and some ravioli. So I'm going to finish the audiobook while making that happen. This guy's gross. The brother's really gross. It's getting real weird. It's getting real weird. I don't like it. Not liking the turn, not liking it. Here's a little food update. That's the fish. And we are also roasting cauliflower, the ravioli on top. And I'm going to be making light Alfredo sauce and tossing it all together. Currently on chapter 7011, it's amazing. Everything is out of the oven. It has been combined and it looks so good. I'm really proud of how this came out. I'm just gonna serve the fish on top of it. Well, could not dissolve it. But after it did snag a couple times, we're like these parents. Hello, good morning, Akasha. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Akasha has surgery today. She has a lump that is near her spine that needs to be removed. The lump is right here, it's about this big. And I am terrified. But we're gonna be strong for our big girl. And she's gonna go to surgery and she's gonna be just fine. You know, she's gonna be just fine. Oh, I'm so fucking scared. There you go, he's a good girl. We are here just on hold while the vet checks with the technician who's gonna be assisting with the Kasha surgery and gets back to us. So that's what you hear in the background. I finished Kinetics by Multimind. I would consider this a horror story. And this is gonna be one of those books that I love, but ethically I can't recommend because I'm giving it five out of five stars. But the brother is just too creepy for me to be comfortable recommending and his creepiness is addressed it's depicted in a way that is gross okay goodbye <laughs> 
to be. This is really difficult because I just had to sign, even though it's a mild procedure, they asked if we wanted to send off the lump for biopsy and it had been biopsied before and was deemed benign, but that was a year ago and since then it's grown and calcified. So I said yes to the biopsy and now she is inside and I had to sign a, which I knew was coming, but still hard to do it, the permission to provide life-saving measures if something goes wrong. Um, so she should be ready for pickup in a few hours. I'm just going to edit and I'm also gonna read another book down. We've got two days left today and tomorrow. I'm proud of myself, but here we go. Hi. Akasha is home. She did great. While she was in surgery, I just slept. I had to go to sleep because I was so stressed out. I was hoping to work and um, get further on the videos that I have filmed and am editing, but I, I just couldn't focus. I couldn't focus. I was so scared. She did great. The lump got set sent off for biopsy. The vet is concerned about it, but we'll know for a fact in seven to 10 days. She got way more stitches than I anticipated. If I had known the incision was gonna be that big, my anxiety would have been off the easy. But she looks good. It's a baby. Yeah, who's my baby? She doesn't wanna take her medication, which means that I have chorizo cooking on the stove. Like, did you see that? I'm not going to do any close-ups for those of you who just don't want to see that, but it's a bit, we thought since the lump was like this big, we thought the instant knew they. So she looks like someone took a bite out of her. I'm going to go check on the chori. So I started listening to another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. It's another one of her memoirs. I read the first, well, I read one of her memoir, memoirs and I'm already liking this so much more. I think the first one that I read was Brown Girl Dreaming. This is incredible. It is incredible. There are, I definitely want a physical copy so I can write down quotes. The memoir itself is, I think it's like three hours long, but I listen on 1.5. So right now I'm content to listen to it on 1.5 speed and I have an hour left. Uh, definitely a five star prediction. Look at the poor baby. I put her in this shirt because it just started snowing, of course, and I wanted her to be safe and I forgot to take it off. And she's been following me around the house, so I'm like, why the fuck are you following me? I don't think she likes this shirt, <laughs> so let's take it off. The little one is about to open her bark box for February. Good girl, what is it? What is it? Who's your good girl? Who is that? What's in there? The baby? This box is called Sniff the Roses. The little rutabaga? <laughs> I don't know, like a turnip, that's so cute. It's a cuddle monstera. That's what it says. That's hilarious. You, she likes it, she likes it. Oh yeah, you like that, you like that. Well, you see what else is in there. Okay, we've got, what the fuck is this? Let's see if she likes it. Oh, yeah, what is it? She doesn't like that one as much. It's too much work. Do you like the balls? <laughs> Do you like the balls? Jessica, look. Oh, God. These are testicles. Like They do kind of look like testicles. Did you, baby? Look at her motorboating the testicles. <laughs> not motorboating. <gasps> oh. Well, they're not attached anymore. Well, he, there you go. This person has lost their testy. Real chicken. Real chicken. The poster, the fake chicken they have. She's playing with the balls. This is either my favorite or second favorite of the year. I haven't decided. Now on to this. Oh my god, I am so tired. I've read so many books and this took me far longer to analyze because to read because it's so brilliant and detailed and of course i loved the hannibal references i learned so much about one of my favorite movies and i'm going to pass out i have never been more exhausted more tired more stressed i'm so 
yesterday I had to stop reading at 3 a.m. because I was hallucinating. I, I don't know why I did this. I, I don't know if I'm going to hit my goal of reading 28 books in 28 days. I've had so many challenges come up, whether it's family or just my general attention span because I've got a lot going on. My channel is doing really, really well for the first time in a while, and so I'm trying to film and engage with comments and keep that momentum at the expense of getting this experiment video done. But it's more about, it's less about this experiment video and more about, I just want to say that I've done it. I just want to say that one year in February, I read 28 books by black authors in 28 days. And we have two days left and I think I still have approximately 11 books to read. I'm going to hold myself to 11 because that way I know it's not more than 11. So that's the number that I'm focusing on in my head. Yesterday I finished the Get Out screenplay. It took me way longer than I thought it would because there's so much to analyze and just because I want to get through these books quickly doesn't mean I'm not going to actually read them. I know that I can just lean into a bunch of graphic novels and that's fine and that's valid but I still want to keep pushing myself. I do have a bunch of graphic novels on the list today but the books that I'm going to finish today come hell or high water are Forged by Blood and Ikenga. I'm also hoping to get through Remind Me Again by Joe Davis and I'd unclicked my heels three times. All of that being said, I started the audiobook for King of the Dragonflies by Cason Colander and I'm really, really enjoying this book. We are following a boy who I believe lives in Florida and his brother dies. His family is very homophobic. He has internalized that homophobia and there's a lot of homophobia in his school. So he is dealing with a lot. He's dealing with that. He's dealing with his anger and also that his brother has become a dragonfly, but he can't tell anybody about this. Case and Colander is the royalty of spiritual realism. And so far this book is hitting. I relate to this black boy so much and I feel like I know these characters. These characters that are telling him you can't cry because you're a boy and men don't cry and now that you're 10 years old you can't help your mom out in the kitchen because it's women's work. Like all right I can't feed myself. I can't learn how to cook now. It's so good and it's a short book so I think I can finish it today on walking Akasha and doing all of the stuff. But I just finished filming another episode in my book buzz series. I'm exhausted. I need to take my meds, which means I need to eat. I need to give Akasha her meds. I have to find the will to push through and read these books. But what's amazing though is my reading experiences are so good. I'm loving these books. By the way, these are the graphic novels. This one I've read, but I want to reread. It's about climate change and it's from an African comics publisher. These are also black comics publishers and I haven't read these anthologies yet, but I can't wait. This story I'm really excited about because it talks about the plight of children trafficked and forced to work in Ghana's hazardous inland fishing industry, which I'm not familiar with. Wow, look at this art. The story was amazing and I see why it won an award. I love that it has this informative graphic on forced child labor in the Ghanaian fishing industry. Definitely gonna be looking into this. What's up, Compton? Who's a good girl? Yes, the baby. We've got some kibble and boiled chicken. You want your kibble? Would you like your kibble and boiled chicken? Call me. <laughs> look what came in the mail. Nor Akasha's eating, but look how holographic the cover is. Oh, oh my gosh, it's stunning. I'm almost finished with King of the Dragonflies by Kaysen Colander, and I had to pause it because I'm cleaning and it just got to be too much in a good way because we're at the part in the book where everything's wrapping up and it's difficult how sometimes the sweetest, most gentle parts of the book that come after all of the pain are the hardest to read. Sometimes it's so hard getting to read that moment where the parents finally start to listen to the kid and apologize for not listening to him. That moment when the black father realizes that his son can be gay and the reason that so many black men feel that like, oh, you can't be gay is because you don't get to be gay because you're already black and that can already be a death sentence. It's such a good book that I just don't know how this book has ripped me into so many pieces in a good way. <sighs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, I'm okay. 
I'm sorry. Okay, you wanna go for a walk? Let's go, sir. Hello, cuties. I have calmed down. <laughs> you caught me as I was waking up and cleaning while listening to that incredible audiobook. So, still in yesterday's clothes and it just hit. Case and Colander writes these incredibly complex black characters, these morally gray, these characters that are just people. So often authors give us characters that are good or bad and we're either supposed to root for them or not, but Kaysen does not write characters that don't make very flawed human mistakes and that's one of the things that I love about Kaysen's work is that every sentence forces you to recognize another person's humanity. It was amazing. A lot of the book is about this boy harboring a queer fugitive and they have a very bad relationship because the protagonist did not treat that boy with love and grace when he came out to him. So I'm gonna make this short because I have reading sprints with Nkechi in about eight minutes. I just wanted to let y'all know that I'm okay now. I'm wearing my own merch, let me read in peace or you will rest in pieces. And then once I get cold, I'm gonna put the sweater on. I have the same exact thing, same exact color in a sweater and it's sitting over there. I also had a really fantastic conversation with my mother and she said to give myself grace. She's like, you have been through so much this month and you work so hard. So if you want to take an extension on this experiment, like do it because what you've already accomplished is in Incredible. We'll just see how many books I'm able to finish during these sprints and then I'm going to count because I actually don't know how many books I've completed. Y'all as viewers will be seeing the count on the screen as I'm reading these books, but I myself have no idea. I'm just trying to get through them as fast as I can. I'm continuing listening to Get a Life Chloe Brown, which I started last year. Maybe I did a video where I read sex scenes from it and some other books in the bathtub and y'all seemed to really like that. And I loved Chloe Brown, but I just never picked it up. After so many of these reads, I'm really craving romance and it's really nice getting back into Chloe and Red's world. It's so beautiful. I forgot how much I love both of them. I finished another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. This book is set in the 1970s and it is a novel, not a memoir, which explained a lot. I got to see the New York that I grew up with all over again and it was beautiful. But this book follows a group of girls and their friendships and how those friendships are tested as they but as they grow, as they develop their own sexualities, and also what it means to be a black girl living in Brooklyn as girls who look just like them and their mothers are going missing. It was so good, short, powerful, impactful. I cannot encourage y'all to read it enough. I also realized that I haven't read the second group book for Blackathon. I did read one of the, the group books, Bless the Blood, but this one, Vagabonds, I have not read. So I started it yesterday. I completely forgot that there were two group books for my own readathon, and I'm currently on page 98. It is amazing. If you liked No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull, you are going to love this. If you like Pet by Akwake Amezi or Amezi's writing style in general, you are going to love this. I see so many of the books that I absolutely adore and love in Vagabonds, which is set in Nigeria and Lagos in particular. Vagabonds are those whose existence is literally outlawed. The queer, the poor, rogue spirits, displaced, and the vulnerable. And in this novel, you are following an array of characters, some who are spirits, some who are spirits who can zip on and off bodies at will, step in and out of skins at will. You're following a legendary fashion designer who gives birth to a grown daughter, a lesbian couple whose tender relationship sheds unexpected light on their experience with underground sex work, and so on and so on. The writing, the quotes that I have highlighted. This author deserves a Pulitzer. Okay, and I'm only on page 98. This writing is incredible. Nothing in this life is free, especially freedom. The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin meets No Gods, No Monsters by Catwell Turnbull and Throw In Pet by A Quick AMSE, and that's what this book is. Nothing in this life is free, especially freedom. They tend to be the only ones who can truly afford it. They're the ones who will gladly pay through their teeth or don't mind paying with all 32 of yours. Incredible. Let's go get these sprints knocked out. I'm so excited to hang out with Nkechi. I absolutely adore them. Her social media info is gonna be down below. She is incredible. I love them so much. All right, kids. My landlord just stopped by because the paint samples came in and he applied them to the wall for me. So this mauve color, would be the doors and the trim and then 
this terracotta-ish color would be for the walls itself. I'm really liking it, but let's see what it looks like when it dries. We also are testing two colors in the bedroom. After looking at them, I'm going to do the purple lavender on the ceiling and then this beautiful blue on the walls. I'm so excited. Appears to have dried. This is what the colors look like. And I'm obsessed, I'm ready to move forward. Akasha, please. So that mauve-ish color is what the doors are going to be painted. This will be the color of the actual walls. What's up, cuties? How are y'all? Today is March 4th. I have decided to take the extension. I miss the first five days of February, so it makes entire sense. The colors, we have decided, those are the colors that we want for the house. They are beautiful, they are perfect, and I've officially decided that the light blue is going to be the bedroom with the lavender on the ceiling. As of right now, I have Spongebob playing in the background. It has been on all morning as I put my finishing touches on the black anticipated releases video that I have going up on my channel later today. As of right now, I am going to sit down and read today, yesterday, Perhaps the day before that, I did little to no reading because I was so busy. I did begin the audiobook for Dazzling. This is by a Nigerian author and it is fantastic. I realized I did not complete the prompt of reading a book by a Sudanese author, but I am still going to attempt to read the books that I've already started. And if I finish those in time for the conclusion of this video, then I will reach for a book by a Sudanese author. And if not, that just means I failed my own readathon. I failed a prompt for my own readathon, which has never happened before for Blackathon. I always complete every single one of the prompts. There is a first time for everything. You win some and you lose some. I also have not read the the NB book club pick for February. The live show isn't scheduled, so I'm not too worried about that, but I do want to start and finish Stars in Your Eyes by Casey Collender. We'll see how much I'm able to accomplish at this point. I'm so anxious because I do not know, I genuinely do not know how close or far I am in this experiment to meeting my goal. I, I genuinely have no idea how close I am to completing my goal of reading 28 books by Black Authors in 28 days. Not knowing is giving me so much anxiety. I love that y'all know while watching this video, but we will see. We'll see what happens. Hello friends. As you can see, the paint came out great. The house is in the process of renovation. I have pulled those three bookcases out of there and they are actually in the living room now. They look so good. And I'm planning on painting all of my bookcases this moody dark green that I saw on Instagram. And I was like, oh my God, that's great. Anyhow. Um, I'm stalling because I don't want to tell you the results of this experiment. This is the part of the video where I give you the statistics and the overall results. And this is the first time I've ever not wanted to do that because I failed this experiment. I read 242.5 pages throughout the course of this experiment with an average rating of 4.8. I read 15 audiobooks, 8 backlist books, I had 3 DNFs, and as far as my most widely read genres, they were contemporary books and fantasy, with romance coming in at the least read genre for this experiment. Shocking. I DNF'd three books, one because the author was not black, and two because I simply didn't finish them. Had I completed all three of those books, I would have made my goal of reading 28 books by black authors in 28 days, but I read 25 books and I am furious. <laughs> I am so upset. Which means this is my first ever failed experiment. I also failed Blackathon in the sense that I did not read a book by a Sudanese author and I did not finish both group books. Now, the official prompt was just to read one of them, but I wanted to read both of them. I did not finish Vagabonds despite it being incredible. I also failed NB Book Club because I didn't read the pick for February, which was The Stars in Your Eyes by Kaysen Collender. I am going to be hosting a live show for this book at the end of the week, starring Ngechi of City Girl Writer. At least I'm going to be reading it this month, but I am beside myself. That is going to do it with this video. I can't wait to be done with it. I'm so upset. I've never failed an experiment. And it just is what it is, but I did have an incredible amount of things going on in February. And so I'm trying to give myself grace. I think overall reading 25 books in one month is still a great, fantastic feat. And overall, I had a damn near five star rating for all of these books. And that 
is the real win. All right, y'all, the playlist to my other experiment videos will be linked down below, as well as the link to my Patreon. Please join my Patreon because we do fun, amazing stuff over there every single day. Okay, not every single day, but we have a freaking blast. But all my other social media links will be down below as well. Stay safe, be good to yourselves, be good to others, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Oh, if you wanna show me that you made it this far, if you wanna show Jesse that you made it this far in the video, why don't you comment with the number 28? <laughs> Ha <laughs>